Welcome to T-Droid Mapping Instructions. This video will explain how to map courses with Google Earth for use with T-Droid Caddy. The first step is to input the address in the Fly To input box on the sidebar. Click the magnifying glass to begin the search. Google Earth will zoom to the location. The next step is to create a folder. Click My Places in the sidebar and add a folder. You can add by right-clicking or choosing Add from the top menu. Name the folder something that lets you easily identify the course you are mapping. We will add the mapping objects to this folder in the next steps. The first mapping object we will add is a course path. The course path is one of two ways to map the basic information for a course. The basic information includes all the T's in the front, middle, and back for each hole. Be sure to name the path course, as that lets the system identify it as the basic info path. Now let's pan over so we can see the first T. You can pan while creating a path by using the arrow keys on your keyboard, or by using the direction pad in the upper right of the Google Earth window. Click the T and it will be marked as the first point on the path. Next, we pan over to the green. Zoom in on the green. You can zoom by either clicking the plus sign in the upper right hand corner of the Google Earth window, or if your mouse has a scroll wheel, you can use it to zoom in and out. On the green, click the front edge, the middle, and the back in that order. If you want to adjust a point, move your mouse pointer on top of it and drag it to move it. Next, we continue to the second hole. For the course path method, a single path is used for the entire course. Next, we will try the second method of mapping the basic information. For this method, you will add place marks to the folder that mark and identify each of the locations. First, we will change the graphic as it is easier to accurately place the targeting reticle than the map pin. Center the reticle on the point you want to map. Name the place mark so that the system can identify it. In this case, we're marking the first T, which is named 1-T. Let me move the dialog out of the way, and let's drag the first T marker to its correct location. Now pan to the green, and let's add place marks for the front, middle, and back. Zoom in so that you can see the green in detail. You can add place marks by clicking the map pin icon in the top bar. Drag the reticle so that the center is on the front edge. Then name it, in this case, 1-F. You can only move place marks while their dialog is open. Select the place mark and click Properties to open the dialog. Let's adjust the position. Now, let's add a place mark for the middle of the green, naming it 1-M. And finally, a place mark for the back of the green, naming it 1-B. The first hole is completed. If you're unsure of the placement of an object, you can use the ruler to check your distances. The ruler displays distances between two or more points. In the next segment, we will learn about landmarks. Landmarks are course features such as bunkers, water, etc. that you can provide information about. Landmarks come in four types, single point, reach and carry, area, and advice. You can use the description field of the Google Earth object to add a description to the landmark. The description will be pulled through when you upload the course mapping. The first type of landmark we will talk about is reach and carry. Reach and carry landmarks display two distances and are created using paths. Add the first point to the side closest to the T. Let's run through a couple of examples. Let's mark the right side fairway bunkers. Add a path to your folder, name it 1-RFWB, then click the two points you would like to map. 
Now let's mark the second bunker. Pan over and add another path. Name it the same, 1-RFWB, and let's give it a description so that we know which is which. Next is area landmarks. These let you mark four points using the Google Earth Polygon object. Area landmarks display five distances inside the Caddy program. Left reach, left carry, right reach, right carry, and the center. Area landmarks are useful for hazards such as a car path or a creek that crosses the fairway at an angle. Be sure to mark the left reach or the left point closest to the tees first. Let's check out a couple of examples. First, we will map a card path. Click the polygon icon in the top bar to add a polygon to your folder. Let's name it 7-CPCF for 7th hole, card path crossing fairway. Now let's click left reach first and then follow in either clockwise or counterclockwise order with the remaining three points. You can adjust the polygon by dragging the points to new locations. Our next example will be a pond guarding the approach to the green. First, let's zoom in on the pond, then add a polygon and name it according to the landmark instructions. If you cannot find the landmark type you want in the landmark list, you can use the other code. Check the written instructions for more information. Now let's mark the left reach first and then the remaining three points. If necessary, we can adjust the points while the polygon dialog is open. The last area example is a pond cutting the fairway in half. We mark the left reach first, then follow with the remaining three points. As you can tell, having the corner distances for diagonal hazards gives you additional information on where to aim your next shot. The last landmark type we'll run through is the single point landmark. You create these with place marks the same way that you would map a T or the front, middle, and back of a green. Our single point example is a location on the back right of an irregular shaped green. If the green is large enough, it can be very useful to have the exact distance. You can also use the single point landmark to mark smaller objects, such as a single tree or the point where the fairway ends. That's it for this time. Good luck out on the course.